So COP26, the COP bit stands for Conference of the Parties, the 26 stands for it's the 26th year, but it's focused around a climate change conference. That's the event, and the event is in Glasgow in November. That climate change conference is going to raise some very stark questions around the way in which the global economy is operating, and it's going to flag up the issue of the uh, climate emergency and what we need to do. We're all in this together, industry, government, citizens, we're all in this together, and we need to collaborate to address the climate emergency that we're all in at the moment. And we are in it, we absolutely are in it. Put simply, net zero is the balance of emissions that we put out into the atmosphere and the amount that the planet actually uses. And at the moment, we're not in balance. We're putting too many carbon emissions into the atmosphere. And what we need to do is to reduce the amount of emissions or else capture some of those emissions and store them so that we're back in balance, that net zero balance. So traditionally, we've used fossil fuels and fossil fuels they emit carbon when they're utilized when they're burned like petrol for instance in a car it emits carbon now if we can move away from those traditional fossil fuels hydrocarbons as they're called towards fuels that don't have carbon towards non-fossil fuels then we'll reduce the emissions Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe and researchers just like myself are looking at the ways in which it may replace existing fossil fuels as a cleaner source of energy. Hydrogen is the most abundant element that we have. It's very easy to access. We have it all the time. I, this morning, I had a cup of tea. You have the tea and you have the water. Water is hydrogen oxygen. So we drink it all the time. We use it all the time. Hydrogen technologies have several applications. You might find them in the transport sector, in hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This might be cleaner buses, cleaner cars. You might also find hydrogen technologies in your house when you turn on your boiler. One day this could be replaced by hydrogen. It has a potential because it is a gas that we can use to combust things, to make energy, to drive things, to heat things, to use at home to replace methane, which is a carbon emitter. To replace methane, which we use at the moment in homes or which we use at the moment in factories to provide heating, to dry furnaces, to replace it with hydrogen. Now why? Because the only emission from hydrogen is water. There's no carbon emissions from hydrogen. Working with us at the University of Chester, these industries are now exploring mechanisms and ways of actually reducing those carbon emissions, looking for new fuels, moving towards a net zero future, all under the umbrella of a body called HiNet. So our students actually have got the skills to teach others as well as other students. So it's really quite a nice programme we've got there, which means that our students go away being clear about what damage carbon does to our world or excess carbon does to our world and can do something about it. It's the doing something about it that's important. HiNet as a project will generate jobs. So it's, it's about the hydrogen pipeline all the way through and supplying major industry with hydrogen. And that'll spin out into cars, buses, trains. It'll have a knock on health impact because there won't be so, you know, it, there's so much there that young people just need to know about it and get stuck in and get involved in it. Don't, you know, as I said, don't sit back and just allow it just to happen around you. Get stuck in, become part of it, yeah. This project is a game changer for the world. We've got the world watching us. We're right at the forefront of the government's agenda now. We're right at the forefront of the world's agenda on Net Zero. If young people actually start to talk to each other and communicate with each other and communicate their concerns, they, they will be listened to. Greta's a great example of that. She, she managed to do that and young people wanted to follow her. You can be a Greta. Anybody can be a Greta. You just have to want to do it. The more you can do while you're at school or when you're at college or when you're at university, the more you can get out and actually apply some of the stuff that you're doing in the classroom, that's much more attractive to employers. Individuals, regardless of their position in an organisation, can take personal responsibility for encouraging others to take on the mantle of sustainability. The young people now are the next generation of the workforce, so they can take that passion into the workforce. So what I would say is, is, is always seek change. You know, don't be frightened of change. Make sure that you're engaged in the change. Don't sit back and just, 
you know, watch it all happen around you. It doesn't matter where you come from, where, you know, what your parents do, it doesn't, none of that matters, it's about you. You can take personal responsibility and say, do you know what, I'm going to make a difference today.